Yeah, I just want to talk to us for a few moments. And kids, I want to talk to you for a few moments as well, if you're able to listen with your mums and dads here as well. And as we've been talking about baby Thanksgivings today and looking at these beautiful babies on the stage, I'm reminded that Jesus said, it takes childlike faith to enter the kingdom of God. And that means that this message I'm going to share today, it's simple enough for you, if you're five years old, to hear and respond to Jesus. And if you're 55 years old, or 35 years old, or in your teens, or your 20s, then today you can respond to Jesus too. You see, no one is born a Christian. No one can just pick up Christianity by being around Christians or being in a room full of Christians. Christianity is not like COVID, where if you're in the room long enough, you'll get it. It happens when a miracle takes place on the inside of us. And that miracle happens when God comes into our lives. And it requires God to work in our hearts to make us brand new. So we're going to read a short story from John's Gospel, chapter 3, about a man who had his life changed by Jesus. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. If you could put that on the screen, please, Ben. Thank you. There was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. So here's the person. We've just made a new friend. His name's Nicodemus. And what we know about him straight away is this, that he's a Pharisee, he's a teacher, a respected teacher, and he's a member of the council. He's, he's a man of influence. He's got his life together. He knows what he's talking about, and he's got some influence for good in the world. I think many of us would be happy with that in our lives if we could know what we're talking about and have a bit of power to help others. And yet Nicodemus wasn't happy with that, as we find in this story, because he comes to Jesus. And he came to Jesus at night. We read that in that verse. I want you to just turn to somebody in your family group or the person next to you and say, why do you think Nicodemus came at night to Jesus? And we're going to have a bit of feedback in a moment. So quickly turn to somebody upstairs, downstairs, say, why did he come at night to Jesus? Go for it. Okay, have you got some answers? Um, Chris Fleming, I'm going to turn to this microphone here. Is that okay? Um, so, um, okay, so what, what ideas have we got? Why did, um, why, why did Nicodemus come to Jesus at night? Any, any of the children gone on us? A Roman. Okay, so some people were a different religion. Okay, so what, why would that make him come at night? Ah, okay. So he, he was maybe a bit worried what other people thought. And so, um, so perhaps he wanted to go incognito. So, um, so perhaps, uh, perhaps he just wanted to either go at night or put his special sunglasses on just so that people wouldn't recognize it's Nicodemus who was there uh, in, front of, in front of Jesus. You know, it's not always easy to be associated with Jesus. Sometimes it's costly. Sometimes it's costly to ask silly questions because you don't know the answers. Sometimes it's costly to follow Jesus. I know friends in other countries where because they follow Jesus, their, their stuff gets taken away from them and they get hurt sometimes. Sometimes in this country, you might get excluded or laughed at if you're a Christian. Okay, so that's one, one answer. Thank you, Roman. Any other answer why, why he might have come at night? Yeah, Colin. Yeah, so that, that's, that's good too. Yeah, so that they wouldn't see him. He wanted to go incognito. That's good. Any other answers? Yeah. 
What's that? It's really hard when people wear face masks to hear what they're saying, isn't it? Too busy. Ah, oh, right, okay. So, um, so here we have, uh, don't know, I thought of doctors when I thought of busy people, but, you know, but perhaps he just didn't have a spare moment in the day to find out about Jesus, so he waited until he had time, and he said, so credit to Nicodemus, he, he found a time when he said, Love, I've actually got some time now, I'm going to go and find out. We live such busy lives, all of us, even if we're not busy, we say we're busy, am I right? And Jesus loves it when we make space for God in our lives. Any other reason? Brilliant, yeah. So, um, so maybe he actually wanted the long talk, the long conversation. I know uh, if you're married, sometimes if your spouse says to you in the morning, we need to have a long conversation about this tonight, that's usually not a good sign. <laughs> but perhaps Nicodemus, he was thinking, you know what, I've done the crowd, I've seen Jesus from a distance, I've heard what he said, but what I really need to know is to talk to him one-on-one -on -one and to experience his authenticity. And to be a Christian is to know Jesus very personally and one-on-one. -on -one. He wanted to have a cup of tea with him. There's another reason that you probably won't guess, which is in John's Gospel, Jesus is the light of the world, and often darkness is referred to the, sort of the state of the human heart without Jesus, that we're in darkness, and that we need the light of the world in our lives. So perhaps Nicodemus... He represented, even though he knew a lot of things, and even though he had a bit of power, he still lived in darkness until Jesus came into his life. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and uh, he, he pays him a compliment. Did you see that? He said, Jesus, we can see that you're sent from God. Nobody could do the signs you're doing unless God was with him. How many of us here like it when somebody pays us a compliment? Yeah, most of us. How about that? When somebody says something encouraging or nice, we like, how many of us find it slightly awkward when somebody pays us a compliment and says something encouraging and looks us in the eye? Yeah, it's a tricky world, isn't it? We find it both encouraging, yet we find it difficult at the same time. Well, Jesus didn't reply with awkwardness, and he didn't reply with a sense of pride and pump the air and say, yes, he got it. He just acknowledged it was true. <laughs> what Nicodemus said was true that he'd come from God. But he did turn the conversation around and say, Look, Nicodemus, yeah, I am from God, but this light that's in me, I want to share it with you. And he said this well-known phrase, he said, Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And he uses this picture of what it means to have the life of God inside you that we can just understand a little bit today. And uh, if we could put up the, the next picture, please, Ben. Here we go. Here's my family. There's Jack, Sam, Evie, and Ben, and Julie. This is a couple of years ago now. But they're all fairly fully formed people, and they all reckon they're better at me at least one thing. Sam's taller than me. Jack's better at football than me. Ben's faster than me. Evie's funnier than me. <laughs> and uh, at least this is their, this is their, th what they think. <laughs> um, and if you could put up the next photo, please. Anybody guess which of my children this is? Yeah, it's not, actually. It's Evie. Yeah, you can tell because she's lying down enjoying herself. <laughs> <laughs> and... So, here's her in her mother's womb. Now, here's the thing. Nicodemus takes Jesus' command very literally. He says, well, he says, how, how on earth am I meant to go back into my mother's womb? How am I supposed to get there, Jesus? I don't think Nicodemus or his mother were really up for that. But here's the thing. We can't go backwards in life, can we? In fact... Sometimes we wish we could. Sometimes we wish we could go back and, and have a different conversation with somebody. Sometimes we wish we could go and act slightly differently in that situation. Sometimes there's things that we regret or feel sorry or sad about, pains that we feel that we wish could be different. But here's the thing about time. It doesn't go backwards. It can only go forwards. So when Jesus says to Nicodemus, be born again, he's saying, well, that's impossible. You can't go back. So Jesus 
enlightens him a bit further. If you go back to the other slide, please, Ben. Uh, sorry, the, the one after that. Here we go. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So what Jesus is saying is this. There's two births that all of us must have. There's a water birth. It, it's a natural birth. Born of water just means physical. And it, it just means when, when you were born as a baby, everybody was born here, there was probably a load of water that came out at the same time. So here's the thing. Jesus is talking about you today. You can put your hand up in the room to say, well, he's talking about me. To be born of water. But then he talks about this other thing, to be born of the Spirit. Physical birth and spiritual birth. Everyone has been born physically. But not everybody is born of the Spirit. And to help Nicodemus understand how you can be born of the Spirit, because that's surely the question he's asking, how can this be? How can I be born again? How can I have this new start in God? And Jesus tells him a really, really obscure Old Testament story, which you might not know. Do you want to know what it is? Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> no, okay. So here's the story, right? So um, there's uh, the, the people of Israel are being led through the wilderness. And the, God is providing everything they need. There's there's food, there's manna, there's everything they need. In fact, there's a pillar of cloud and fire that leads them by day, by day. They're protected by God, they're loved by God, they're led by God. They don't need anything else in life except they think they do, so they just complain nonstop. Day after day, they whinge. And they say that God doesn't love them, God doesn't care about them. And God, for a moment, just allows judgment to come to them. And it comes in the, in the form of some, some snakes that come into their camp and start biting people. And some of the people start getting sick and dying as these snakes come into the camp. And suddenly the people start saying, God, would you help us? Please, would you protect us? And God gives Moses an instruction. He says, Moses, would you get a pole, please? And he says, and I want you to make a metal snake and to stick it on a pole and to hold it high in the air. And anybody who looks to that snake will be healed, and they will have life, and they will not die. And Jesus tells this story to Nicodemus. He says, so Nicodemus, remember that story. Just as Moses was lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So what Nicodemus didn't know was what Jesus was going to do. Whereas you and I today know what Jesus did because we live after the events that happened 2,000 years ago. So this is a prototype. What's it a prototype for? It's the cross. It's the cross. So here we have, here's our thing. This is portable. Did you like that? Just, you can carry it in your handbag anywhere you go. It's amazing. No. So here we go. So if Nicodemus was in this room today, Jesus would say to him, here's what you need to believe, Nicodemus. You need to believe that when Jesus, the Son of God, was lifted up on a cross, if you look to him and what he did when he died to take away your naughty things, your sins, then you can be healed and you can be set free and you can know God and you can come into the kingdom of God. And it's as simple as that, to believe. Everyone who believes in this will have eternal life. But do you know there's one more step that I need to lead you in today? Because it says in John chapter 1. It says, to those who received him, to those who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent or a husband's will, but born of God. Here's the second birth. 
that you can receive today. And it comes not through just believing about something that happened 2,000 years ago for you, but it comes through believing it happened for you and by receiving that gift into your life today. So today, we're just going to have a moment to pray. And today, you could, this can happen for you. And kids, this could be for you as well. You can, in fact, we're, we're going to do something very sort of, because it's childlike faith, right? We're going to do something. We're going to just put our hands together. It doesn't say to do this in the Bible. It's just a way of keeping our hands busy for a moment so that we don't play on our phones and those sorts of things. And we're going to close our eyes and we're going to pray a prayer to Jesus who's alive because he came back from the dead. And if you'd like to ask Jesus into your life to make you brand new, then I want to invite you to pray this with me today. Let's pray. Pray this in your heart. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you for dying on a cross for me. Thank you that you took my naughty things, my sins. Please come into my life and make me brand new. I want to be born again. Thank you that you can hear me. And if you prayed that prayer today, just while our eyes are still closed, just just pop your hand up in the air just to say, I've asked Jesus to come into my life today. Is there anybody who wants to say that? If you have prayed that, but you're just a little too worried about putting your hand up, I'd love you, if you're a child, to maybe chat to a mum or dad who's brought you today and say, I prayed that prayer. Or if you're an adult, to talk to somebody who maybe you came along with today. And it could be like Nicodemus, you need a bit of a longer conversation. And we do a course called POD that is just a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to chat about the questions you have and to look at some of the answers that Jesus gives. And I really want to recommend that to you today. If you'd like to find out about that more, you can find that at the Connect Desk uh, in just a moment's time. So that brings us to the end of this talk. I don't know, if, are we going to sing one more song maybe? Yeah, let, let's, I don't know if Marianne and the band could just lead us in one more song and then we'll uh, wrap things up.